Okay, we're here for the uh, for Thai Ha. We're here in the glass counter, and we have Ed, Double Blogger, Vitality, Vitality. Little Girl, Hi, Tina Tom, Little Girl. Just film. And everybody else. Brand, random logos. Yeah. Girl well, we're back here filming because last time we were here filming, they put us on the website. That's right. That's right. They did. They did. Yes. yes. Huh. We're on the website. Go to go to uh, firtaihao.com and you'll see a dot com for video. Oh, right. Huh. So this will be another one up on their website again. My name is Gary Arndt and I blog at everything-everywhere.com and I've been traveling around the world for the last two and a half years. I've been to over 60 countries and 100 World Heritage Sites and today I'm in Vancouver eating noodles with John Chow. This has to be a dot com per first. Ed Lau, who's normally always the last one to show up, today was the first. He was, was the first, one, the first here. one here. What the hell happened here? Well, normally I'm late because I'm still sleeping. But today, I'm early because I haven't gone to sleep yet. This is what I call a Nam Witch. And what that is, is a Vietnamese sub. Uh, they take French baguette bread and uh, put their own little ingredients in it. Mine, for example, has uh, barbecued pork or grilled pork, which is really, really good. And what they put is, I think this is cilantro cilantro and uh, pickled carrots and uh, radish I believe and uh, cucumber and uh, yeah these are delicious I always get tons and tons of these all the time uh, usually I buy them for like ten dollars for four but here it's a little bit more it's 450 but this is actually really good so if you're ever in a Vietnamese restaurant and you see a you know a sub looking sandwich Give one a try, you might like it. This is a pork chop with egg, shredded pork, hot rice. We got some vegetables, all served on a nice. That's why I'm, that would be disgusting. That's why I'm gonna call it. Have you seen Man vs. Food? This week's sketch of the week is the Nikon 1D Mark II. No, it is not the newest one on the market, but. Some people were wondering about what the uh, the photos um, for our recent post at the Morrissey were taken on, and this is what I use. So this is a eight megapixel camera. It's not you know super high resolution, but the great thing is that it's really really fast. And it goes on for uh, quite a long time until you got to reload. Um, other than that, fits any Canon lenses, and there's no built-in flash. <laughs> That's why you see a candle next to a lot of the pictures at the Morrissey. Uh, for more information, go to canon.com. What do you have to do to travel the world for two years? One, you need enough balls to do it. Because the big thing stopping most people, they say, oh, if I won the lottery, I would do that. And it's not a matter of money, because you can do it for a lot less than you think. The thing is being able to break away from your family's going to not want you to do it, your friends are going to say, why are you going to do something like that? You just have to be able to go and do it. And then once you've done it, people will then start being proud of you rather than being apprehensive because everyone's afraid of travel. The only thing you ever hear about about foreign places is uh, when bad things happen in the news, there's always a mudslide, a murder, a cop bombing, things like that. So everyone is, is afraid, but there are billions of people every day who are going on living their lives not being killed. Uh, so it's travel's perfect safe. You just need to have the balls to do it. How many ammo do you have? She doesn't know. She lost count of how many ammo she has. If she gets older and runs away, just check the miles. See if she's cashed him in to go anywhere. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> My best travel story is when Ed Lau puked on me. That's right. <laughs> what happened was, we went out drinking one night uh, after we, uh, after one day I com Computex, and uh, we were basically treated to whatever we wanted, so we went a little wild. We walked home that night. Uh, well, did we walk home that day? We walked home. We walked home, and after uh, everything was fine. Michael was pretty drunk too that yes, day. Yes, he was. Yeah, uh, Stephen was probably the most sober of all of us that day. The next morning, we all woke up. And we all felt fine. I was pretty hungover, but uh, you know, whatever. 
So I started getting to work on my laptop, so did Michael. Steven went to the washroom and got a call from uh, our, uh, the, what's his name? I forget. Uh, anyway, the guy that paid for all our drinks. And then, I, at that point, I felt like something's not right. So I walked, went to the washroom, and at that point I knew, I knew that uh, I kind of needed to do. So Steven, I pointed at Steven like this. Steven. And Steven just keeps talking on the phone. Like nothing's happening. So, I, long story short, I couldn't get to the any of the open sinks or drains or anything on time. And uh, Steven ended up with a very, well, colorful shirt after a while.